In this video, I'm going over the differences in VPNs, which ones are safe, which ones log, which ones don't log, and the difference really between a $1 VPN and a $10 a month VPN. So all over YouTube, you see VPN services. They're pretty much everywhere. It's such a common advertisement that you see. Some people have explained VPNs and a quick breakdown on what a VPN does and doesn't do. All a VPN is, is an encrypted connection to a server elsewhere. So that just means part of your internet connection is being encrypted to the VPN provider. So you're the client, this is the provider, this secure tunnel is established, and all the traffic between you and the provider is secured. So that means from the provider out to the rest of the world, that's completely open and can easily be traced back to the VPN provider. Now it's up to the provider whether or not they basically sell you out or not when it gets back to them. So between you and the provider, it's a secure connection. And what happens is most VPNs advertise no logging. And what no logging does is says, hey, we don't keep any logs. When you connect to our service, we don't keep any records of that connection. That means if the FBI comes after them, they can turn over all of their data and your connection is not going to be part of that data. So that's what no logging is. Now, why, would, why wouldn't everyone do a no logging is probably the best question to ask. And it's very complex because doing a no log server is a lot harder than doing a logged one because there's logs everywhere between the switches, between the actual servers hosting it. There's logs in every single place. So it requires some advanced configuration to really rip out all these logs and have a true no log scenario. Most of these cheap providers honestly just advertise it. And then when these investigations happen, they obviously just turn everything over that they have. And in some instances, logs do exist. So the best way to pick a VPN provider is to look and see who has actually been investigated by government entities and who actually led those authorities to the person. That'll tell you if the logs are actually working. Uh, a good example of this is in 2016 and also in 2018, private internet access was basically sanctioned by the FBI said, hey, or subpoenaed by the FBI and said, hey, we need all your information between this person. And they basically said, okay, well, we don't keep any logs. Here's everything we have. And they turned it over. They only gave out really and said, hey, the IP you were requesting is part of the Eastern coast that cluster where we have our data centers and that's all we really have. They didn't actually give out that information. And there's many other VPN providers that have done the same thing. There's about four or five with documented reports of actually no logs being turned over. So definitely check that out on the internet. If you're looking into a VPN provider, make sure that, hey, they don't actually keep logs because many of them advertise it, but you need to make sure that they've actually been investigated and actually what they've turned over didn't have user information in it. So in that 2016 case, what happened? Was that person safe since they were using an authorized no logging VPN server? Did they get away with this heinous crime that they committed scot-free just because they were using a VPN? Well, no, that guy actually went up going to prison for three and a half years for calling it a bomb threat because when he did the bomb threat, he like advertised it on Twitter and other pieces of social media. He thought he'd be slick by paying cash for some track phones. And those track phones had surveillance cameras in the place he purchased them. FBI got that surveillance camera. They looked at it. They went ahead and arrested the person and searched everything he had. They found the actual track phone chargers in his car. They also found the private internet access username and password in his wallet. They also got those logs from private internet access and that said, hey, this IP was accessed around the region that this person lived. They couldn't pinpoint it to him per se, but they did get the username and password directly off his person. He kept it in his wallet and they knew that it was in the same region that he was in. 
you kind of get what's going on here. There was circumstantial evidence. There was a lot of circumstantial evidence. And because of that, they were able to tie that crime to that person and he was arrested and put in prison. So when people think that VPNs that have no logging, that have a good track record of no logging, and then they think they can go commit crimes, uh, that's completely false. That's not really a thing. They might not be able to track it down back to that one person, but there's still a lot of things that go into tracking down a criminal on the internet. Another thing that really isn't talked about on the internet is if you stay connected for long periods of time through one of these secure no logging VPNs, they can still come and get you. You have an active connection for an extended period of time. If you stay connected for a day or more, there's a good chance when they go and investigate that person. And if that person still has an active connection to that and haven't disconnected and refreshed that connection, they're still going to be able to track that person through that IP address if it remains open for an extended period of time. Most people don't understand that and they can still go to the provider and if you still have that active connection possible, that provider has to give you up. Just because there's no logs doesn't mean they can't track active connections. So another distinguishable point that most people glance over in this realm. So, uh, you know, some people have dedicated connections, but they always have that connection open to the VPN provider. Well, guess what? You can still be tracked even through one of these secure VPN connections. So what does all this mean? Honestly, it just means that if you're going to commit a crime on the internet, well, there's a good chance you're going to be caught. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. There's way too many metrics that go into it. However, privacy oriented people, it's more of making yourself more secure from bad people on the internet. And that's really the main purpose of VPNs. What I use a VPN for, and I've used it for many, many years, is private internet access. And I've used them specifically for public access points. If I'm in a public area, if I'm in a hotel or if I'm in a coffee shop and I'm connecting through my laptop, I absolutely will be using a VPN provider because there's so many security risks. And by establishing a VPN in a public place, you secure that connection from here to the provider. And when you have that connection, that means that traffic is okay. And then from the provider out is fair game. So uh, that's the main purpose of a VPN from a public standpoint. Most people don't understand, hey, this is what VPNs are really meant for. And also VPNs are meant in a lot of ways in business. I've set up a lot of VPNs through open VPN protocols, just using them and establishing it as a server and a client and then encrypting that traffic back and forth. So let's say I had a whole bunch of stuff at my house and I didn't want to open up SSH in my firewall to the whole rest of the world, well, I would go ahead and establish a VPN with a VPN server here at the house, and that way I can encrypt everything, and then I can go ahead and run those SSH tunnels uh, through my VPN. So those are the really two big options that I use VPNs for all the time, but really these paid services are a lot of times advertised a little incorrectly, or uh, people represent them in a false pretense really what they're meant for is to secure people and that's really what it is it's not to secure your entire internet because that's impossible it's securing you to a specific provider and then that provider goes out to the rest of the world it's just that portion of the connection that is secure if you're looking for a vpn provider again Check the links down below, or if you're looking for secure and private oriented things, I left uh, privacy tools down below as well to where they recommend some things. Their VPN section I don't particularly agree with from that website, just because they say you should only use a VPN provider hosted elsewhere in the world. Why that's fair and good and all, uh, by doing that a lot of times you get pretty poor performance, especially from speed because you're connecting to another provider you know, outside your country. So, uh, you know, something to think about when you look at this privacy thing. I don't agree with the VPN section, but a lot of the information on this website is fantastic. And I'll probably go over it in depth in another video. But as far as VPN providers, definitely check out who has actually been investigated before actually providing and going and purchasing a VPN provider. Now, if you're interested in the one I'm using, which is private internet access, I went ahead and left an affiliate link in 
the description below. Now, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments section, and I'll see you in the next video.